The man read the newspaper at lunchtime. Hello everyone, my name is Callum and today I'll be discussing Seth and Bain's 2022 paper Theories of Consciousness, published in Nature Review's Neuroscience. Given I'm presenting a review, this presentation will echo the structure of Seth and Bain's paper, beginning by outlining what exactly are the problems that different theories of consciousness are trying to address, before discussing four primary theories of consciousness and closing with an evaluation of theory crafting and some of the future directions these theories may attempt to take. So, to begin as any modern discussion about consciousness theory would, Seth and Bain discuss the work of David Chalmers and his outlining of the easy and hard problems. The easy problem of consciousness is concerned with a mechanistic analysis of neural processes. For example, we know that visual information is ultimately sent to the primary visual cortex, where this visual data is processed and influenced our behaviour, our perception, and the neural basis of our thought. The problem here is how this happens mechanistically. It's considered easy because it's a logical consequence of mechanisms in the brain, and given enough time and technological advancement, we can peer ever deeper into the neural mechanisms of the brain to better understand them. Solving the easy problem results in identifying the neural correlates of consciousness. That is, as Seth and Bain put it, the minimal set of neural events jointly sufficient for a conscious state. However, Neural correlates of consciousness are not sufficient to solve the hard problem. The hard problem is concerned with these sorts of questions. Why do things feel the way they do? Is what one person feels the same as another? And if the mechanisms are the same, why can things feel different to different people? Seth and Bain describe how we can understand the hard problem as the experimental dimensions of consciousness. And at the moment, there seems to be no prospect of a fully reductive explanation of experience in physical or functional terms, which Seth and Bain describe as the explanatory gap. To close this gap, we would need to have a theory of consciousness in hand that either aims to address the hard problem directly or justifiably sidesteps it entirely. Having an empirically validated theory of consciousness, as Seth and Bain say, should be the goal of all consciousness science. The heart of the problem of consciousness is experience and subjectivity. There is something it is like for an organism to be conscious, and what it is like will differ depending on the state of consciousness. These are called qualia. A good theory of consciousness will explain why some organisms or systems, if we're going to talk about a computer, are conscious and others are not. Seth and Bain identified 22 different theories in their paper, but for the sake of this presentation, I will discuss only the four most substantiated ones. And these are higher order theories, global workspace theories, integrated information theory, and re-entry theory. So we'll jump right into higher order theories. Seth and Bain identify higher order theories at their core to believe that consciousness comes from higher order processing of stimuli. Higher order theories ex focus on explaining why some systems are conscious and others are not, as having multiple layers of meta-representation are central to consciousness. Because of this, higher order theories often dismiss the function of consciousness, seeing it instead as the result of meta-analysis. This theory favours the prefrontal cortex heavily, which has been shown experimentally to be the centre of higher order attempts to account for the phenomenal character of emotion and metacognitive states perhaps better said as the center of where we decide what something is like in order to make perceptual decisions. These theories are often challenged by evidence suggesting that anterior regions are not involved in consciousness, perhaps only being important for executive control of other regions. Next, our second theory is global workspace theory. 
Looking at the figure, global workspace theories say that mental states are conscious when they are broadcast within a global workspace. To get there, local processes are mobilized by ignition, which is supported empirically by links between ignition and long-distance information sharing with consciousness. Seth and Bain identify that global workspace theories, like higher-order theories, are concerned with what makes a representation of stimuli conscious. For example, if we look across the room, why is our perception of someone's face conscious, but what is occurring outside the window not? These theories suggest that attention selects and amplifies specific local processes, which allows them to enter the workspace and become conscious. Our third theory is integrated information theory. Seth and Bain describe how integrated information theory is different to the previous two theories, as it starts with consciousness as a certainty and works backwards. IIT rests on the understanding that if a conscious experience can be fully accounted for by a physical system, then the properties of the physical system must be constrained by the properties of the experience. Integrated information theory thus claims that any irreducible integrated information is conscious. Looking at the figure, integrated information theory focuses on the so-called posterior cortical hot zone, as the parietal, temporal, and occipital areas exhibit the greatest degree of high-level information integration. Integrated information theory is difficult to substantiate, as producing a quantifiable measure of consciousness is fraught with challenge. Finally, our fourth theory is re-entry theory. If we look at our figure on the left, the core claim of re-entry theory is that conscious mental states arise from top-down signaling that predicts the cause of sensory stimuli. Errors in these predictions are constantly minimized by bottom-up signaling that together approximates Bayesian inference. Re-entry theory is largely substantiated by evidence revealing how top-down control is correlated to perceptual experience. Re-entry theory struggles to address more global states of consciousness, as it is more concerned with how local states of consciousness are brought to the fore of conscious perception. So, to wrap up Seth and Bain's paper and their analysis of these four theories, it's important to echo their evaluation that theories are not confirmed by a single finding, nor defeated by a single experiment. Seth and Bain identify still further problems with all these theories in their failure to address the unity of consciousness, known also as the binding problem. Each of these theories can discreetly address one aspect of perception, but not how they all simultaneously slot together to capture the full scope of being. These theories of consciousness can nevertheless be effectively used as a narrative structure to inform how we interpret neural data and perhaps contextualize how we understand consciousness more broadly. Thank you very much.